This is Amplify You, the podcast about you discovering your message and broadcasting it to the world. If you're a coach, author, or speaker, you'll want to tune in. If you're looking for the best return on your time investment to get your message out to the world in a bigger way, we're giving you full access and behind the scenes look of how we're running our podcast, how our clients have found success, and what you can do to launch your podcast today. The world needs your message. I'm Michelle Abraham, the host. Join my family as we unleash your unique genius and find the connections you need to launch your adventure today. Join us and let's get amplified. Hello, hello, Amplify You family, Michelle Abraham here, your host. I am bringing you today an awesome behind the mic interview. I have special guest, Anna Sergunina with us today. So Anna, how are you doing today? Hi, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me over. I am fantastic. Awesome. Well, let me tell you our audience a little bit more about Anna. So Anna is the Money Boss podcast host. Uh, She is a CFP and has over 16 years experience as a certified financial planner, is a CEO of Main Street Financial Planning, and which is one of the nation's largest fee-only, project-based, planning-only focused companies. So she serves young families with children and wanting to grow their wealth to make smart financial decisions along the way. She's got, she's a new mom to her two-year-old son, Liam, and a wife to her husband, Yuri, of 16 years. So Anna, thank you. You're very family-based, I can tell. And we're so happy to have you here talking to us today. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you. I'm excited. Yeah, so let's dive into your podcast. So we're here behind the mic talking to the host, uh, which is awesome. Get to hear all about the story. So tell us your why behind why you wanted to start your podcast. Yeah, <laughs> good, uh, good question. <laughs> uh, and the short answer is, and I'll get into more obviously, um, I, I really wanted to have a, a space um, for, uh, to have conversations about money. Um, you know, my background is a certified financial planner, allows me to talk about, you know, all kinds of topics. And I, and I do that uh, with clients that I work one-on-one. But as I became a mom, um, and, and it really uh, kind of shifted um, some things for me in terms of like, okay, what is, because we only have so much time in a day, right? And, you know, having a having child and then additional responsibilities on the top of what I already was doing, um, kind of, you know, makes you to find, you know, some kind of a balance and a focus. And so if that's how I have to live my life going forward now, there's probably going to be less time spent on, you know, focusing on the finances, right? Just because now the time is applied in another area. So I thought, why not um, have, a, have a platform, right? Or a space or community. And podcasting is really attractive to me um, just because other m- ways of, you know, creating content isn't, isn't my jam. Like writing is not my favorite thing to do. So I'm like, all right, I'm great on video, but it's just like, it's a lot of work. I like doing makeup and hair and don't get me wrong. That's all cool. But if I can just, you know, push the button and start recording and put my thoughts out there and then also create a platform to, to have other guests come on and share their expertise. Um, and for me, just to simply ask them questions and have an experience that all they checked off my boxes. So, you know, motherhood all together, my, my, my journey as a financial planner, um, and then just really wanting to, how can I um, add just, you know, a little bit of a value to, to your busy day, because finances and money are such a, it's a hard topic for a lot of people, we're, we're busy, we're focused on other things, and um, yeah, so I just, I, I wanted to have that space, and particularly talk about money in, in, as it relates to parents, especially parents with young kids and, you know, how do you, how do you think about finances? What do you do? What are some of the, they, there's, there's lots of different topics um, that I'm interested in discussing um, yeah. together. I love that about your show. You know, I've become a new fan of your show recently and, you know, because I have small kids myself too, it's really interesting that some of the topics you have on there, especially I enjoyed uh, when we had a guest on there and she was talking about how to talk to your kids about real estate where, you know, how we used to like back in the day, you know, go to school, get a job, stay at a job save up for retirement, buy a house. And that's our retirement plan. Well, that's no longer like really happening these days. And so I found that really interesting uh, on the, on the podcast where she was, you know, explaining that. And like, that's so true. Like things have totally changed. (laughs) 
Yeah, you know, it's it's really interesting because when I started, like when I thought about, okay, well, here's the podcast, you know, here's the, the platform. I like podcasting. I listen to podcasts. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, I, I want to focus on, you know, on, on helping parents. And it kind of evolved, like, okay, parents. And then we started to de- dig into, uh, you know, issues or, you know, ideas of how do we teach our kids to be better with finances so it just like opened up a whole other door Mm -hmm. um you know for us to have conversations and like and for me to have experts um that you know could share their advice which was really awesome I like to um like with my with my podcast I I like to have a variety I, I think it's just my personality even uh, you can even ask my husband, like, okay, what are we having for dinner today? I'm like, okay, we, we had uh, chicken and pasta last night. Let's have fish today. So like, I, I like to have a variety just because it gets me excited. And I'm, you know, uh, my mind works that way. So for the variety on the podcast, I thought, okay, I can do, uh, I can do interviews, which is, you know, which is, I think, common for, for, for podcasters. But I still also want to have solo episodes where I can go out and, I think of these episodes more technical in terms of like, okay, here's a money concept or money issue that we're talking about. Let me maybe get a little bit deeper about it and explain some things and bring real life examples, whether they're my personal or something that I've heard from a client. So I just thought that that kind of variety would at least let listeners be more open to hear about these concepts, right? Like it's not, you don't need to read a financial planning book on how to deal with your money. You just need to, because we're all like humans are um, emotional beings, right? We need to feel, we need to, this is how, especially with finances, this is how we're better off in making decisions. And actually a lot of money decisions are emotional decisions. So I thought that uh, could be just a different angle and different take. It's not any crazy new topics. You guys all have heard of, of all of this stuff. It's just, a, I don't know, my interpretation in a different way and a variety uh, mm-hmm. is really what I wanted. Yeah, I love that because, you know, if you have, obviously a lot of the content can come from like your things you've heard your clients talk about in, in sessions with you or things that you've experienced yourself. And I think that lends uh, a really great lens to the people who are listening to be able to be like, oh, I resonate with that. Or, oh, Anna has clients that obviously that's been a a thing for them too. Like, oh, that's me too. They can self-identify as to being potentially great clients for you as well by listening to your podcast. So it's a great strategy. Yeah. I, 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 and I, yeah, you have a point here. I also, you know, there's common questions that I always get, you know, asked frequently, like, okay, what is it, you know, if this is coming up a lot, why not talk about this? I'm sure because there's people who, there are people who may be afraid to ask a question mm-hmm. or it seems like a silly, stupid question that nobody wants to ask me. Like, right, well, let's talk about it. It's not. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think, I, I just like, this is really, and it's been sort of my baby number two, you know, I have a <laughs> real baby <laughs> who's all, all, he's, my son is, um, son Liam is almost three. He's going to be three in January. So, um, I, and I started the podcast uh, about uh, 14 months ago. So obviously it's in the very early stages of, you know, of, of it growing and, and, and kind of really still getting the footing of like, okay, what, what am I doing? How does all of this stuff works? And, and I did all of like a lot of the work myself for a very long time, mm-hmm. just, just because I didn't know what I was doing, I was trying to figure it out. And like, okay, there's not a whole lot of money coming from the podcast yet. Like, anyway, so it's uh, a little sidetrack here, but um, yeah, it's I, I'm still trying to evolve with the show. And I've um, um, I've heard um, you know just kind of uh, you know comments and and feedback from uh, from a few clients who did not listen to my podcast before, but then once they learned, they're like, oh. And, and that's actually, I don't know if, if, if other podcast hosts have that reaction uh, from friends or family, but sometimes people are like, oh, you have a podcast? I know about that. I'm like, oh, did I not tell you? So somehow <laughs> we forget to tell people we know that we have a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I'm uh, sure yeah, you're a reminder. Right. Yeah. And I'm sure in your case, too, it'd be really helpful if some of your clients went back and listened to some of the episodes, too, because it gives them a better understanding of some concepts, too, that you talk about on your show that would be helpful for them when they come in to being a client, too. And I think that's a great way to, like, look at your podcast, too. Like, it's a great place to send new clients to. Like, you know, if you want to learn how to do X, Y, Z, like, go listen to episodes four to, four to seven, right? Then you'll, you'll get the idea of what we're talking about. Here, it's a great way to use to intertwine within your business too. Yeah, exactly. No, and that's exactly where I sort of like paused and thought to myself, like, okay, I need to make sure I've told 
everyone I know in this whole white world that I do have a podcast mm -hmm. um, because the client was like, wow, whoa, you have a hundred plus episode on your podcast. I don't know what I'm going to have time to catch up. I'm like, don't worry, we're not going anywhere. Just take your time. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it was a compliment in a way, but I was like, okay, I think I need to do a better job with, with promoting. And then that's probably, you probably hear that from, from, from your, you know, your, your, your other folks that you work with um, who are podcast hosts that that's probably the hardest part, right? It's like, okay. Doing, doing all this work behind the scenes is awesome. And I still actually, I didn't know that. This is one thing that I learned um, mm -hmm. about myself. I actually very much enjoy the interviews, like the whole behind the scenes, like creating mm -hmm. of the podcast. Um, so I, and that's, I think that's like the first year. Um, I don't know if others feel that way, but that's what I've learned about myself is like, okay, this is cool. I'm gonna continue doing it. It's hard, but I, I've got it. Now the next phase comes in, okay. So I've got the, the creative part, the process and all of that. It's like, okay, now I need to look, you know, a little bit, you know, down the road. What's what's in the store for this for this show? Uh, I, it's sometimes it feels like I may run out of topics to talk about, right? <laughs> yeah, and then and then all of a sudden you sit down and think about it, and you're like, okay, I've got tons of topics. <laughs> right, 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 yeah. right. Just it's a phase too. Like sometimes, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, and what I often see, like we're seeing a lot of shows now that are kind of like in the stage where they're wanting to relaunch their show, where like, you know, they've been talking about something and they've kind of outgrown the topic or their business has evolved a little bit. And I think people before were very... um thinking very, very much um, all of the mindset that podcasts were had to stay the same all the way through and you can't change. Well, podcasts can evolve with you and your business, which is great. So it's like, mm -hmm. like you starting your show when your son was so little, that's awesome. Cause all those topics, it's like when you're in that phase of your life and then now, like as he's moving into toddler, say you're going to bring in some other new things that are coming up. And then when he starts, you know, getting allowances or learning more about money too, that's going to lend for some, a whole other new kind of topics too i think that's really cool and to be able to evolve with your show i think is great yeah yeah that's yeah nice. no you have a good point you have a good point there too yes i can i can definitely evolve that's why i think that's that's actually one of the reasons i love podcasts um is is that you can you can yeah you can tweak it to if there are podcasts focused on you know life like lifestyle decisions and, mm -hmm. and you know things like finances um, then sure, that can definitely evolve with you. That gives you the flexibility. I have not relaunched the podcast. I had a thought about it, but um, I just, I tweaked. I did actually, um, after a hundred episodes, I started really, you know, as you start something new, like you're really excited. I was doing three episodes a week. And oh, wow. <laughs> I burned, yeah, I burned myself down. Like I, I, I forget when it kind of slowed down for me, but it was just a lot. Um, and then I decided, okay, <clears throat> what's the, what's the rush? Like, what's the rush of me trying to create, you know, uh, so many, you know, so many pieces of content because it's, that's really what it was at the beginning. And I was trying to figure out what's my voice. How do I talk about these things? Um, once I started to have more gas, I just, I, so I'm t uh, down to two episodes a week. And that seems to be a good dynamic for my, you yeah. know, one solo episode and then one interview. Um, so I, I think last six months or so I've been focused on, on two yeah. episodes a week. Yeah, I love how you do like the one interview and then the one solo show because, you know, oftentimes I think people forget that like when they're coming to their show, people are coming to their show to listen to them. And then if we have all guests, I know this is a mistake that I've made in 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 a few of the shows that I've had before is that if it's all guests, people don't get a chance to hear the, the host voice and get to know the host as well. And, uh, you know, just exactly what you said. And it was became one of your most favorite things to do in your business. I, I hear that a lot from a lot of our clients see that it, podcasting has become like their favorite thing to do in their business, which I'm so happy to hear about that because, you know, we see podcasts come and go all the time in the world where people get that pod feed. But I think you've done that. You've done your show in a very smart way where it doesn't have to pod feed. You're never going to run out of content because as you're growing, your business is growing, your podcast is growing, it can move along with you. And I think that's, that's super cool. Now question on your, um, on your type of show. So your what, what um, category are you in, in your show? Yeah. Um, so right. I, tw I tweaked it a little bit actually very recently um, because I wanted to, um, I started with business category because um, I mean, there's not the real category for financial planning, but business mm -hmm. was what I started with. And then I looked around um, to see, you know, where other podcasts were ranking. And since I, so after about episode 100, when I like really 
purposely decided to sort of like, okay, I'm focusing on, on, on finances for parents. This is where I'm like, this is where my angle was. Cause it was kind of, it was more general to begin with as, as I was trying to figure all of this out. So then I changed it to parenting. Um, so it's, mm. it's money boss. And I, I, and I, the first category is parenting. I forget what the, I think my second category is business. And then I think the third, at least this is the setup on my, on my behind the scenes platform, uh, family and kids. Nice. Uh, because again, a lot, I, I'm, I'm tying all of that, uh, you know, all of the messages. The parents, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. how to fit money into your, I mean, you know, I think that's such a important thing as parents are grow. parents are raising small children too, like their finances, like sometimes becomes like the, the sticking point on some, some, some disagreements, right? As people, you know, you're tired, okay. you're navigating small kids, you're trying to parent finances sometimes becomes a bit of a conversation that's not always the best conversation so I think this is awesome having you're having money conversations all the time in your podcast and I think it's really going to help your listeners who are parents um, be able to you know have conversations in their home (laughs) about money and be more educated about the topics too yeah no I agree it's like it's like I'm I'm starting to even come up with new analogies because a lot of what I've said in the past we're like okay well you know your finances is like you you go for a checkup to a doctor's office once a year right or like you do you know phys- physical once a year so now it's more like well you know parenthood doesn't come with the manual you kind of like you kind of have this baby and like you're supposed to know how to do this <laughs> like how and so and then i was like well the same thing is true about finances like well how are you supposed to know how to deal with your money how like okay how to make it how to save it how to spend it like all of those things if you've never taken any personal finance classes if you've never like really spent any time if your family was not good with money so like <laughs> how are you supposed to do it? and so I'm like oh my god there's so much there's so much uh, similarity in both of these things that mm. we have to figure out a way um to talk about this and and, and really not be ashamed because um it's hard it's parenthood is hard i know for those <laughs> who are parents I only have one kid. So for those of you who have more than one, I mean, I, yeah, you're my gods. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so our finances, right. You, and, and, and two, I think we can evolve as we get older, right. As we go through the phases of life, like, in, you know, I'm sure we, in, you know, whatever your age is, like when you were in your twenties, right. If you're like in your midlife now, you look the finances differently. You're, you, you know, you maybe worked more or I, I don't know, like now, in, you know, for me, I'm close to my, uh, to being 40 and I, now my life looks different. Now I want to mm-hmm. focus on, on different things, even with the money that I'm continuing to make. Right. So, and then I'm sure it's going to change even further. Like when you get in your fifties and sixties and so forth. So it's like, yeah. it's an ever ongoing topic and conversation that um, I don't know. I just see so much parallel here with, with the parenthood. Yeah, I love that. I haven't seen anyone really like parallel those two together before. I think that's an interesting twist that you have on your show. I think it's so, it's so true. <laughs> they definitely I'm going to work both, more on that. Yeah, they definitely both don't come with manuals. <laughs> no, thank no. you for highlighting it. I'm just that. That's even more like exciting. Okay, yes, this is the this is the conversation to continue. <laughs> yeah, uh, for sure. To continue how. Absolutely. Yeah. I think especially when like one one parent goes on maternity leave and, you know, then you have a cut in your finances or, you know, those kind of things. And I know like the people um, up here in, in Canada um, who do our, um, um, the college education fund, right? They were, they were calling me while I was still in the hospital with my son <laughs> about when I wanted to set up wow. my college education. But I'm like, I just literally had him 30 minutes ago. <laughs> like, it's so funny. How did you know? <laughs> so funny. Wow. That is amazing. I should, I should, I used one of the first jobs ever I had uh, <laughs> when I started out in the financial service industry actually was working for, uh, I used to, I used to live in uh, Maryland. And mm. um, I, I worked for Maryland State because here in the United States, the the college uh, savings plans are administered by states, but then they there's you know a couple levels uh, layers there. So anyway, I used to, I remember I used to actually go out to state fairs and pass out brochures and do presentations to parents in um, elementary school. But it, it it always like it just didn't click quite click in my head about like elementary school. Your kids are like you know, what, six or seven, um, and you're just starting to, like, save for college, like, isn't that a little too late? So, like, <laughs> the call you're getting is a, is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty <laughs> it funny. Be, 
I know. I was like, what? I need to start thinking about this now. I'm like, I just literally gave birth. (laughs) Yeah. It was good. (laughs) No, that's not. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm totally using that example because that was just, anyway, it never really made sense to me why elementary school, like, but yeah, the earlier the better. The sure. earlier the better. Yeah, that's awesome. So, Anna, tell us a little bit more about your um, your vision for your podcast. You've t- touched on it a little bit. So, just before we let you go, I want to hear what is your hope that you are doing with your podcast. What is what's your hope that your listeners are getting from your podcast? Yeah, um, I haven't given a whole lot of thought. Like, yeah, don't have a business plan for my podcast for sure. This is really a passion project, but. I think at the end of the day, um, and as I evolve with, with, with my message, and I think it's, it's, it's become a lot more clear to me, um, you know, what topics I want to bring, you know, how to be like, the, how to like run that parallel of parenthood, motherhood, and finances. I just want my listeners um, to, like, every time they listen, every time they spend 15, 20 minutes, I try to keep my podcast, like, you know, some uh, interviews, maybe like maximum 45 minutes, but that's a lot of time. That's a lot of attention and energy that they give me, which is, which I'm really grateful for. So if anything, I want to give practical, uh, practical things that they can implement. I like every guest I have, I'm like, okay, we, we're great to talk about your topic, but I need something that, that, that my listeners can take away and actually go and do. Like, this is the biggest challenge I have in, in the line of work I do with personal finances, because I'm, I'm, I'm more on the advising side. And so clients come to me for advice um, and I do give them advice, but where I find the hardest part, it's, it's not just in finances. I think it's in life in general is actually doing and implementing. So if I can just mm. inspire someone and share like a really one thing, one little nugget in, in, in every episode that you can just really do and stick to it. I think that's, that's going to be by far the most rewarding uh, thing. And if I ever hear back from you that that really worked in your life, then that's, that's made all of this really worth. <laughs> Makes it all worthwhile, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. I think that's one of the best things you can do for a podcast or something they've said on a show, tell them that you've made a difference or that it's changed your life or something like that, I think is so so powerful. So I love that. So thank you so much, Anna, for spending time with us. You guys go check out Money Boss Podcast. Uh, Anna gives so many great tips on there. She's got some cool guests on there. And I've enjoyed becoming a new fan of the show myself. So go and have a listen. You can find it everywhere you get podcasts. And Anna, do you want to send them to your website to go check it out? Yeah, you can uh, You can check out my financial planning company, which is MainStreetPlanning.com. Awesome. And your podcast on there too, right? Exactly. Yes. Awesome. All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much, Anna, for being with us and Amplify You Family. I hope you've enjoyed this behind the mic interview. I know I certainly have enjoyed getting to hear all about Anna's story and behind uh, the reason why she does her podcast and all the things that she is doing in her show to make it the best possible. I hope for you that you were listening and picked up some great nuggets there for your own show. And until next week, go out there and remember your uniqueness is your genius. Amplifying into the world is ours. Take care, guys.